I'm Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. Here's a very important concept which we are going to discuss. We'll talk about stationary points, saddle points, and point of inflection. They are actually related with the critical point. And so I have a question for you. This question is extremely important question. Explain the difference between the following with the help of an example. A. Critical point and stationary point. B. Stationary point and saddle point. And C is saddle point and point of inflection. All right. So uh, one thing what we can do here is that we can kind of uh, sketch a graph in which we'll have all kinds of points. Okay you need to figure out what type of uh, point is each, right? So let me just uh, sketch a function which is kind of like this. Okay. Okay. So I made a kind of complicated function which has many different kinds of points to work for. We'll actually try to focus our attention on a few critical points which are like this. Well, this let me call this as A, let me call this as B, C, D, E, and F. So, what you need to do is these are your six points. Classify them as critical points, stationary points, saddle points, and point of inflection. That is an exercise for you. Okay. Right. Now let's try to understand each. So let's begin with critical point. What is a critical point? So when I say critical point, I mean that the derivative is either equal to zero or the derivative is undefined. For any function f of x, right? That's what we mean by when we write critical point. Is that clear? Now derivative for this graph will be 0 at a, c, d, e and will be undefined at f, correct? And therefore, we could write uh, uh, that for critical points, out of this curve, we have the points which are A, which is uh, B, it looks like a vertical tangent, right? C, D, E, and F. Here also it is undefined. So at any cusp or a corner, it is undefined, and this seems to be a vertical tangent. So that is also undefined. So, so in this case, these two, the one at F and the one at B are undefined. The other ones are the turning points. Clear? Now let's see what is a stationary point. So when I say stationary point, I mean that the first derivative is equal to zero. That is primary condition, right? And what basically it means is that out of the points given to us, A, C, D, and E are the points which we are looking into, right, in this particular case, correct? So here the stationary points are A, C, D, and E. Right? F is not a stationary point since here the derivative is not defined. Do you understand? So that means stationary point. Now at a stationary point, oh, one thing is very clear, we could have, uh, could have a maxima, we should say local maximum, right? Local minimum or neither. Right. So, it is not necessary that once the first derivative is zero, you will always have a local maximum minimum, right? It could be 
neither also. Uh, just to give you an example here, uh, let me sketch a curve like a cubic function. Do you understand? So here we do have a derivative which is zero, but we don't have local maximum or minimum, and that is called the saddle point. Right? So so that is called the saddle point. So let's call this saddle point. So saddle point basically is a stationary point. which is not an extrema. You can say local extrema. So in that case, this point, let's call this point at present P, will be an example of a saddle point. So you do see the shape of it like a saddle, and that's how it gets its name, and that is the saddle point. Clear? Now let's talk about the last thing, which is point of inflection. Now point of inflection is where the second derivative is equal to zero and concavity changes. Point of inflection does not have to do anything with the first derivative, right? So it is independent of first derivative. Now this is this is very important to understand and that is where the difference between the saddle point and the point of inflection comes. Do you understand? So that's the key. So these two things are not really diff uh, same. They are very different, right? You could sometimes have same. So in this case P is the one where the second derivative is also zero. So here we know the second derivative is also equal to zero and the concavity is changing, right? So, so this one is also a point of inflection. So P is also a point of inflection. Is that clear to you? But it's not always true and that's why they're different. They are not always true, correct? So I hope the basic concept is clear. And now, let's have some questions based on it. So now let's have a quiz. I should say a kind of a quiz because I'm going to answer and explain you the things. But it thinks where, how are the difference? Now we'll, now we'll answer the question, how are they different? Okay, so, what I would like you to do is pause the video at this stage, provide me with some examples. Uh, so provide examples. Right, so that is the, the real part of this question, right? So we need to explain difference between them and provide examples, right? So now let's look into this part. So I hope you have understood the basic concept, but now, the idea is to give you examples where we can say, well, this is a critical point, but not a stationary point. Well, for that, we already have examples. If I have f of x is as absolute value of x, right? In that case, uh, we have a critical point at x equals to zero, right? Perfect, right? However, for this particular graph, there is no stationary point. Correct? Uh, as you can see from here, if I have this graph here, then we know that f dash x equals to zero at x equals to zero? No. F dash S is undefined. Undefined. At x equals to zero. Therefore, we have a critical 
point at x equals to 0. But for stationary point, we should have derivative to be 0, right? So at this particular point, we have a critical point. And you can see, we do have a local minimum also, right? Here, we do have a local, in fact, this is the absolute minimum value. However, since f dash x is not equal to 0 at x equals to 0, it is not a stationary point. Is that clear to you? So whenever you have a critical point, which is because of derivative being undefined, it cannot be stationary point, right? So, so in short, you can say that stationary points are where critical point has first derivative. as zero, not undefined. Do you understand? Another example could be, you could write uh, f of x equals to, let's say, x minus 2 to the power of 2 over 3. Correct? So those kinds of radical functions or this absolute kind of functions, they may be continuous with a critical point. However, they will not have a stationary point. Is that clear to you? So I hope this difference is absolutely clear. Okay. So this graph will have a cusp, right? And that is a corner. So wherever we have a corner, so wherever we have a corner or we have a cusp, in that case, we have a critical point, but we do not have a stationary point. Does make sense to you, right? Now let's look into the next example where we are going to discuss about stationary point and saddle point. Okay. Now, stationary points. As far as, uh, let me sketch a graph here to explain the concept. B0. So, let's say we have this function here, right? So you will observe that we have a horizontal tangent at these points. Okay. So uh, let's say I'm in S, let's call this. Okay. So at these three points, we have stationary points, right? So, so stationary point basically means basically means that the derivative is equal to zero, right? So if this is a function f of x, that means a horizontal tangent, right? So we have all the three points, m, n, and s. So here we have a local minima. And here we have a local maximum value and this point is actually the saddle point where we have neither max nor min you understand so the saddle point clearly as you can see is where the derivative is equal to zero, but neither extrema. So it's like a saddle on the horse, right? So that is how it gets its name and that's what it is. 
clear? So that is an example. So you will understand that the saddle point is a stationary point. So saddle point is always a stationary point. So let me some no, make a note here. So this is very important, right? Note. Saddle point is always a stationary point. Clear? So that is what it is. However, a stationary point may not be a saddle point since this is not saddle point, right? But only that one is the saddle point. Correct? So that is how you look into these two. Now you could have uh, many examples where you can have these kinds of functions, right? So any function which will have a cubic root like this will have a saddle point at that point. Now let's talk about the last thing which is most important here is to understand how saddle point and point of inflection are different. How saddle point and point of inflection are different. So, so as you understand point of inflection means second derivative equals to zero and concavity changes. For the saddle point, we have a horizontal tangent that is the first derivative equals to zero, right? First derivative is zero and where uh, no, I will neither, let's say no maximum value no local maximum or local minimum. Let me write like this. So that is a saddle point. Now you may say that most of the saddle points are point of inflections. They may be true, may not be true. Let me give you an example, okay? So I should give you an example to understand this concept. So let's take a function f of x as equal to x cubed plus x, right? Now, what is the first derivative? First derivative of this function is 3x squared plus 1. Now, is it is f dash x equal to 0 for any x belonging to real numbers? No. Right? So, so to make it 0, we know uh, to make it 0, we'll have to do this, right? We have to do 3x squared plus 1 equals to 0 or we'll say 3x squared equals negative 1 or x is equals to negative 1 over 3 square root plus minus. Now that is a complex number. So that means no critical point, right? So we have no critical point. Therefore, no saddle point. Is that clear to you? So for this function, we do not have any saddle point, right? However, uh, let's do the second part. That is, uh, we know the first derivative. Now let's find the second derivative of this function. Second derivative is 6x. So, so we know now the second derivative is 6x, uh, 6x. So at x equals to 0, the second derivative is equal to zero, right? So when you plug in zero here, you get zero, right? Now on either side, if you analyze this situation, on the, the left side, because uh, we have uh, zero here, right? If I take a value on the left side, it is negative. So, so on this side, it is negative. On this side, it is positive. We're talking about the second derivative. Is it clear? Negative means concave down, positive means concave up. So the concavity changes and therefore we have point of inflection at x equals to zero. Since the concavity changes at x equals to zero, you get the idea? So for the given function which is f of x equals to x cubed plus x, 
we do have a point of inflection but we do not have a settled point therefore it is possible to have a point of inflection without having a saddle point right so they may look similar but they are not is it okay so there are very different points important thing to understand is for a saddle point we are analyzing the first derivative for point of inflection the second derivative right the concavity changes for both that is common okay so change in concavity is common concavity changes yes here also the concavity changes however second derivative is zero for point of inflection first derivative may or may not be zero for settled point first derivative has to be zero is that clear to you so with that we end this video and i hope you understand very clearly what is the difference between these three things rather four right so so a critical point is a point where we have a first derivative as zero. So critical point is defined with first derivative, right? So always when we are looking into critical point, we're looking into the first derivative. Stationary point also first derivative. Settle point first derivative. But point of inflection is with second derivative. Do you understand? And plus concavity. Is that clear to you? So what do you notice here is that there are many examples where you might have a point of inflection. For example, let me sketch one here. So if I, for example, point B. So point B is a point where we have a point of inflection, right? So point B has point of inflection, right? but it is not a saddle point it is not a saddle point similarly a concavity changes here also that is again a point of inflection but not a saddle point so we do not have a saddle point here in this particular graph right so so no saddle point in this graph in this f of x correct However, we actually have two point of inflection. This one is also a point of inflection, right? So let me call this point as G. That will be a point of inflection. Perfect. So as you notice here, that many times we may not have any particular settle, uh, uh, I mean, uh, settle point, but we may have point of inflection. Is that clear to you? Right? In this example, we had both point of inflection and cell point right so here we have both so i hope you the concept is clear feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best